more Vancouver Canadians baseball on Team 1410. Here's Rob Fay. Everybody loosened and limbered up thanks to that seventh inning stretch in front of a crowd of just over 4,000 fans here tonight at the ballpark. And boy, they've been real loud. And if the Canadians can maybe get a run or two here in the bottom of the seventh or the bottom of the eighth and make this a game, you never know what's going to happen at a park that's got more than 60 years of history here. This park opened up in the spring of 1951. And the players that have come through this uh, ballpark the stuff of legend. Everybody from Brooks Robinson back in the days. Of course, the iconic Baltimore Oriole. Alex Rodriguez. More modern day names like Rich Harden, Kurt Suzuki. And maybe one day the man that walks into the box will become one of those iconic names. Malbino Fuenmayor. First pitch that he sees, he fouls off. The hulking Venezuela tonight hasn't done much. But what he did in the regular season is probably a large part of the reason that we're able to bring you this broadcast tonight. He was a real crutch for the Canadians when they limped their way through the dog days of August. He was the one man that just seemed to find that base hit when he needed it most. And you'll hear from him again before this night is done. A pitch that misses and the count evens up at 1-1. One one. A ball leaks down the third baseline. He did it again. Albino's going to try and stretch this one into a double. Nope, he'll put on the brakes in a wise decision. And it's very quick to the baseball was Trey Martin in left field. So it's a leadoff single in six of the first seven innings of this game. The Seas have had the leadoff man on. That's something you can look at as a reason the Canadians might just be hanging around in this game. And here comes Art Charles. Got to remember last time these... Three, four, five came through. They did nothing. He's going to run here. It's a real ball game again. And again, a visit to the mound from the catcher, Wilson Contreras. This is an obvious move at this point from the Boise Hawks and manager Mark Johnson. Anytime the Canadians get into this or the fan base starts to gain a little momentum, they'll absolutely slam the door. I'm, as a broadcaster, I'm cool either way, but you can obviously see the intent. Swing and a miss on a changeup, and the count goes to 0-1 to King Arthur. Charles awaits the next pitch. It's a fastball, that it's in for a strike to the knees, and the count very quickly goes to 0-2, and boy, Pujolis has started with a pretty good selection of pinches an 80 mile an hour change up that was swung out and missed followed by a 93 mile an hour fastball that might have looked even faster a pinch inside the count goes to one and two bullpen's been working for the canadians down the line ben white a starter who has been taken out of this three-man rotation and he's a pretty good guy for clayton mccullough to draw from should he be brought into this game Matt Newman looms on deck with nobody out. A pinch that is fouled off, and boy, Contreras is going to kick himself. That was right in his glove, and then it dropped out. So a bit of a gift from the baseball gods to Art Charles. What he does with this offering is simply that remains to be seen. Outfield shifting towards right field. Charles, a dead pull hitter. 1-2 is a changeup high and deep to right field. Long-ranging run to the warning track. It's gone! and they pulled to within two. Stayed back on the changeup and drove it out of the ballpark. And the Seas, who were left for dead, are fighting their way back, and it's a two-run game, and this place is about to explode. A visit 
from David Rosario. To his pincher to buy his relief. A little more time, if you will. Take all the time you want, brother. We're ready to go. 7-5, boys. He was 7-1. And the Seas just continue to fight in the net. They're rocking now. Fans are standing up, dancing, clapping their hands, kicking their feet. They know they're back in. And after knocking on the door for six innings, Art Charles just kicked the whole door right off the hinges. Ball laced but foul down the first base line. Pujolis is in trouble. No balls at one strike to Matt Newman. There's nobody out here in the bottom of the seventh as a fastball misses low. Seas are within two. As the 1-1 one -one is on its way and it misses and the count goes to two balls and one strike to Matt Newman. If the Canadians come back and win this game, it will knock the wind right out of the stomach of the Boise Hawks. They've got to win this one. Fastball in for a strike and the count goes to two and two. The right hitter kicks and fires and got him. Wonderfully placed changeup. And Newman remains over for the game. So as Newman works his way back towards the third base dugout, in steps Christian Lopes. Sees with a pair of runs at the bottom of the sixth. Two more here at the bottom of the seventh as they fight like a champion. This is exactly what you would expect from the reigning champs. If they're going to go down, you better believe they're going to fight right until the end of the bell. A fastball in for a strike, and the count goes to 0-1. The right-hander, Pujolis, trying to find his way back after giving up a two-run home run to Art Charles with Balbino on deck. Boise 7, Vancouver 5, still a little baseball to be played. And the Canadians will have their say as the pitch is up in the zone and the count goes to two balls and one strike with one out here in the bottom of the seventh. Sees fighting real hard tonight. That changeup vicious as again it swung on a mist and the count goes to two and two. Kids, if you're listening, that's a pitch you should work on. Everybody talks about the curveballs, but you can change your speeds the way that Pujolis is. You're going to find your way through. Slider that missed outside and the count goes to three balls and two strikes. Steps in. He's piercing white batting gloves, holding on to a black lacquered bat. 3 2 is chopped at the third base to Candelario, who bobbles it, throws it across, and it's into. No! Beat it out! Lope slid head first into the bag and just beat it out. Rock shoulders can't believe his fortunes. He thought he was there. So the tying run comes to the plate. Ramirez looking for his first base hit of this series. Fastball misses low. And the count goes to 1-0. The Seas Nation below us here in the broadcast booth clapping in unison. They know they're on the verge. Ramirez. Swing and a miss on a fastball on the outside portion of the plane of the count. He up at one and one. His Toronto Blue Jays patch on his right sleeve. Wearing the black number 32 jersey. Ramirez hits the ball out for the shortstop. 
Only one play. It's to second, and they got there, and they just got him at second. What a wonderful play from Hernandez as he was able to get Lopes for the second out. So Ramirez is going to be over at first base. I'm telling you right now, it was a real subtlety, but the way that Hernandez got to that baseball backhanded, it stopped on a dime, turned to find Amaya. It was a subtlety, but a major play that Hernandez was able to find the man. So Tucker Frawley will make his first plate appearance of this baseball game for the Canadians. And Frawley comes into the series two for four. He was pretty good at the plate with a couple of walks against the Everett Aqua Sox. Not a guy that's known for his power, if you will, but a guy that can keep innings moving along. And on deck is Jorge Flores. Flores already with a two-run double in this game. If he steps into the box, perhaps if Frawley can find his way on base, Canadians are going to be feeling pretty good. Pujolis, working from the stretch, offers up. There's a pitch out, and it's going to be an uncontested stolen base. I'm not sure why Contreras did not throw down to second base. They called for a pitch out, got it. Ramirez was dead in... No man's land, and all of a sudden, Contreras just pulled back and let Ramirez have the bag at second. So a massive run in the middle of the infield now as Ramirez dusting off his black jersey, wiping away the dirt from his white pants. Looks over at Clayton McCullough, the manager for the Canadians, who's just beyond the chalk line of the third base bag, and takes his marching orders. Frawley with a golden opportunity. Swing and a miss, and the count goes to one ball and two strikes. Got to remember, this is Frawley's first plate appearance, so he's coming into a game. He's been sitting cold for six innings, and all of a sudden he's asked to step into a box and hit a 93-mile-an-hour fastball. It is not the easiest request. Hands the one-two. He's a changeup that missed outside Contreras. The catcher tried to frame it by turning his wrist once he received the ball inward to try and hug the outside portion of the plate. Fastball in the dirt, so the count goes to three and two. Again, you've got the all-star shortstop, Jorge Flores, looming. Several steps back of the right-handed batter's box, and he would love nothing more than to dig his cleats into in this inning with runners on base. Pujolis with his back up against the wall, offers up the three-two that is laced up the middle, gets through, runs going to come around. second base. The throw from the center fielder, Amora, missed the mark. Seven, six, Vancouver, come on. Tucker Frawley lays stoic on the Canadiens bench for two-thirds of this game. It comes up with a huge hit. And now the all-star shortstop will step in the box. And here comes Mark Johnson to pull the plug on Pujolis as the seas on the verge of erasing a six-run deficit. They're not there yet, but boy, are they close. All those runs that Boise scored in the fifth and the sixth, the seas have answered back. It's a one-run game. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll introduce you to the newest star for the Hawks, the Seas, ready to grab the lead right here on the Team 1410. Whether you're building a new home or renovating your current home, if you need concrete advice, call Cask Brothers Concrete. Cask Brothers has cemented their reputation as a leading local concrete supplier since 1936. Let them help you choose a solid foundation and show you the decorative beauty of Artivia, the art of concrete. Call the Cask team, John, Hugh, and Carlos at 604-294-3286. That's 604-294-3286 or visit kaskbrothers.com. 
planning a summer get-together is like building a great ball team. And your all-star is Mont's Clamato Caesar. Sure, you can serve something less exciting, but that's like bunting. No, you want to point to the outfield and hit it over the fence. That's the kind of savory zing Mott's Clamato brings to the party. For recipes and inspiration, check out mottsclamato.com or just pick up Mott's Clamato Caesar, classic original or extra spicy, at BC Liquor Stores. And your next get-together will be a home run. Walking up the middle. It's going to go into the seats. And Vancouver's up 2 to one. We're back with more Vancouver Canadians baseball. On Team 14 here's Rob Fay. Two outs in the bottom of the seventh. Going to be the all-star shortstop, Jorge Flores, with the runner at second against the first rounder of the Chicago Cubs. Yeah, they went out and had to get the big gun, and they probably made the right decision. Here comes Hayden Simpson, the hard-throwing right-hander out of Magnolia, Arkansas. Did his university at Southern Arkansas. Let's face it, he's the stunt out of the bullpen right now, and... He has got a little bit of time against the Canadians. My voice crack, and I didn't think we'd get to this moment in the baseball game. Back on July 13th, he actually picked up the loss. Went three and two-thirds, scattered six hits, three runs. Only one of them were earned. And almost a month to the day, he picked up the win after going five innings, striking out six, limiting the Canadians to just three runs on five hits. So he's not Superman, but in this moment, he's definitely an upgrade as right now, the Boise Hawks bullpen is scratching their heads, saying, boy, we thought we had this team dead to rights. And yet Vancouver has fought all the way back. They're not within five or four. They're not within three or two. They brought it to one. And Jorge Flores is going to get a rock of salvation as he steps into the box. Tucker Frawley. He's out there in the middle of the diamond. He represents the tying run. So can you believe it? But the Seas, 180 feet away from tying this game at seven. Jorge awaits the first pitch. It's on its way. It's a curveball that misses, and the count goes to 1-0. Hayden Simpson is the guy. He's one of those guys that you draft and you say, you know what, we're going to give him a couple of years, and he'll be somebody. It'll pitch for us at Wrigley one day. But here tonight in Vancouver, he's got to get his team out of a pickle. Fastball up. And the count goes to 2-0. Oh. You've got D.J. Davis on deck, and that would be interesting, a battle of first-rounders. Simpson was taking five selections after D.J. Davis, who's on deck with that black lacquered bat wearing the black number 12 jersey. But before we get to Davis, the stage is Flores. who right now is ahead of this count, two balls and no strikes. 7-6 Boise, but the Canadians with the tying run out at second base. 2-0 is inside. On a night where butterflies took center stage north of the 49th, the Seas have remedied that with five runs and are now looking to tie this game up. Lock them on four pitches. Tying run at second. Lead run on base at first. D.J. Davis is 18 years old. He was signed by the Toronto Blue Jays for more money than you and I will make in a number of years. But here today, it doesn't matter how fat his wallet is, what round he was taking, it is simply him against that right-hander. Hayden Simpson walked the first person he faced. He has yet to throw a strike. Fastball low, five straight pitches have missed the zone. The roar of the crowd, the boos and the hisses can only mean one thing. It's a visit to the mound from Wilson Contreras. D. 
D.J. Davis does not have a hit in the postseason. If he gets one now, it might physically rip the roof off this building. Swing and a miss, and the count goes to one and one. Bullpen activity for the Canadians. Boise Hawks have something brewing as well down the first base line as the chess match between Mark Johnson and Clayton McCullough continues. 1-1. Swing and a miss on a wickedly placed changeup, and Davis steps out of the left-handed batter's box knowing that the last swing so off the ball will probably summon that pitch again before this sequence is done. Canadians with runners at first and second. Down by one. They haven't come all the way back yet. This comeback means nothing if they can't come all the way. 1-2. Curveball missed. We'll do it at 2-2. Two two. First curveball that Simpson has thrown tonight. First time that he was in a scenario where it was something that he could offer up. It's going to be either a change up on the outside portion of the plate or a fastball up. Simpson comes set, working from the stretch. Frawley will it a pounce. Change up. Out to the second baseman, Amaya. Fielded cleanly. Flips it, and it's dropped! Frawley can't score. He didn't see where the ball was. Amaya flips it to Hernandez, and Hernandez dropped it. Oh, man, the most critical of errors at the worst possible time. And Kellen Sweeney steps up in the bottom of the seventh with the bases loaded. A gift to the second baseman of the Hawks. And just like in last night's game in Yakima, it's Amaya that has trouble with the baseball, throwing it into shallow left field and giving the Canadians another lease on life. Sweeney's single in the eighth inning in game one against Everett in the West Final was the only RBI of the entire game. Fastball missed low, and the count goes to 1-0. and Tying run for the Canadians is 90 feet away. Lead run is out at second. Big insurance run is over at first. one 0 is a fastball that is in the dirt. You've got 4,000 fans right in your face, and Hayden Simpson's feeling it right now. If you're just joining us, Bob here is attempting to break his previous record while lying on his couch. He sure is, Steve. Bob is attempting to use the littlest amount of energy. Wait, he's on the phone. He's going to get his spare fridge removed. And they're even giving him $30 for it. Bob is making a profit. His wife won't believe this. Using less energy to use less energy. 
genius. Visit powersmart.ca slash fridge to find out how you can recycle your spare fridge and get $30 for it. Power is precious. Let's be smart with it. Whether you're building a new home or renovating your current home, if you need concrete advice, call Cask Brothers Concrete. Cask Brothers has cemented their reputation as a leading local concrete supplier since 1936. Let them help you choose a solid foundation and show you the decorative beauty of Artivia, the art of concrete. Call the Cask team, John, Hugh, and Carlos at 604-294-3286. That's 604-294-3286. Or visit kaskbrothers.com. The plane and the plate, the throw is on the mark, and then you got him in there. Get the crowd crazy. This is Vancouver Canadians Baseball on Team 14. Here's Rob Bay. Oh, baby. The ball park is all back to zero. Seven, seven Canadians in the race. The six-run deficit. Raucous environment, and I don't know what this stadium will do if Melvino grabs himself a base hit. What a night for baseball in Vancouver. At this point, man, at this point, win or lose. Everybody in Vancouver got their money's worth and then some. Rafael Deplan has just stepped into the game. The Dominican hard throw on right-hander comes in with a record in the regular season of 3-3, three and three, an ERA of 4.37. Last time he pitched against the Canadians, he went three innings, gave up two runs. One was earned and took the loss. The lights in my press box are flickering. The energy in this building is unbelievable. Rafael Tablon against Balbino Mayor. First pitch was a curveball that is fouled off. And the count goes to 0-1. Balbino's got one hit this postseason. Canadians have the lead run. The lead run. 90 feet away. Bullpen for the season has been warming up. There's nothing left in the Hawks. They're done. The 0-1 is in the dirt, and the count goes to 1-1. One one. How about this? The first rounder of the Chicago Cubs comes in and walks in the tying run. Boy, the adrenaline must have just been a bit too much. And now you've got Rafael Deplan against the man that has helped the Canadians get to this spot in the first place. A cult figure in this city that's about to etch his name if a base hit finds its way. Fastball outside and the count goes to two and one. I don't care where you play. I don't care where you've been or what you do. It is an absolute challenge to pitch in the net when you're on the road. It's a major league environment, I swear to you. Two one. Please. In the left, eight, seven, bring him around. The throw's going to be off the mark of the team. We're up by two. Bambino! Nine, seven, Dan City. Can you believe it? The six foot six Bohemian with an opportunity to put the cherry on an unbelievable Sunday. The pitch from the right hander is inside and will get away. Here comes the run for 30 scores. Sweeney makes it 10 7 Vancouver.
Kwan will get a visit from the second baseman, the third baseman, and the catcher. The roof of Nat Bailey Stadium is unbelievable. It's shaking as if it will fall before the night ends. tonight in California. Loving life right now. 1-0 to Charles. is a fastball in for a strike. Whenever this bottom of the seventh inning ends, I don't want to go to a commercial right away. I want you to hear the eruption of this fan base when it finally comes to an end. Swing and a miss, and the count goes to 1-2. and two. The champs not ready to go. Not yet. The one-two from DePlante is up the zone. We'll do it at two balls and two strikes. Canadians have scored seven times in what has become a very lucky seventh inning. The two-two is on its way. Got him. Listen to the crowd here for a minute. will take a 10-7 lead to the uh, top of the eighth. Vancouver six outs away from the biggest victory maybe in this franchise's history here on the Team 14 10.